You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present The Female of the Species by John Fryer with John Hines, Zig Staniaszek, Vonda Dushinska, Paul Collins and Dan Martin. Now it says here that you're Frank Brown, 78. You've worked at Tunbridge Corridor for 18 years. Quite a record, Mr. Brown. Actually, you don't mind if I call you Frank, do you? We like to keep these things informal, if we can. Is that okay with you, Frank? Sure. Great. What's your name? I'm Special Agent Kyle Jones. I'm with the FBI. Do you want to see my ID? Would it matter if I did? Well, some like to see it. Makes them more confident they're not dealing with a fraudster. That kind of thing. We're inside a police station on West 124th Street. We are. If this is a fraud, it's a very good one. Thank you. I take your point. It says here that you like to fish. I've done some deep water myself. A group of us go down to the O.C., spend a weekend off the coast. Is that your type of fishing? No. What type of fishing do you do, Frank? Hook and line, mostly. Hook and line? Yes. Fish with others? No. You don't go river fishing with the same guys from work? Stay out? Under the stars? No. And what do you do, Frank? I go up to the lake at Beresford, stand on the shoreline, and cast off. That's it? That's it. Bet you get a lot of bites. No. No? Sometimes you can stand there all day and nothing happens. Nothing happens? But then I'm guessing one day something does. You just have to be ready for that day, right? And being ready, that's the skinny, isn't it? That's what it's about. Seeing the moment and taking it. Wouldn't you agree? How could I possibly say no? And your employment record is spotless. Thank you. You're a model employee. You're always presentable, as I can see right at the moment. Thank you. According to your company file, you're punctual, never late, even by five minutes. I give myself plenty of time. Me? I'm always on the last minute. I simply get the early bus. Summer and winter? Summer and winter. And you're never ill? Thank you. Yes, sir. Looking through your attendance, I can see that you've never called in sick. In in all these years? Wow, now that is impressive. Me? I kind of look at those days as uh, supplementary to vacation time. You know what I mean? I mean, you give the job week after week of your life. You're entitled, don't you think, to something in return. I get my salary, Mr. Jones. Kyle. Kyle. But don't you find it irritating that you have to stand guard while other people just swan on by, not giving you a second look? It's the job. And you do it well. Year after year, you're always there, diligently protecting the public. Ready to take action when the need arises. I am only one man. But of a team, Frank, of a team. And being part of the team, that's what's important. Being someone your friends can count on. Knowing the site, all the exits, all the angles, being a presence. A man you can rely on in a tight spot. Thank you. A man that never takes a day off. A man who is never sick. Never, ever sick. Me? I'm sick all the time. Ask my wife, she'll tell you. If it's going around, you can bet I'll pick it up in some form or another. Then I'm straight on the phone to the office. I'm sick, I can't, I won't be coming in today. I'm a collector of aches and pains constantly. Open my eyes, I've got a headache. Scratch my legs, my calves hurt. Stand up, my back is broken. Sometimes I wonder if it wouldn't be better just to pull the plug on the whole thing. Admit I'm not the man I once was and learn to be my age. Hell, it's just a job, Frank. I don't believe I owe them anything, do you? 
I respect anyone that can turn up and do his time day after day, but do they appreciate you any more for doing it? I think we both know the answer to that now, don't we? And do they offer you anything back in return? I mean, a Christmas card, sure. But we both know that those are the top. Well, they're doing all right, aren't they? I guess it's good to know that when the times are hard, that the millionaires will be okay. That's a comfort to us all, isn't it? But you've never taken a day off. That's your, uh, your, what, your work ethic? You must have had sickness in the last 18 years. There has to have been a time when you drank too much the night before, or hell, just didn't feel like turning up that day. Happens to me every Monday morning. The alarm goes off, and I can tell you I bury my head in the pillow. The drive on the freeway no longer holds the same excitement that it once did. Oh. But you? Hell, you seem to love your work. Not a day, not even half a day. An impeccable employment record. Fall or spring, hot or cold, wet or shine, you, Frank, are as regular as the seasons are long. Which makes me ask the obvious question. I'm sure you know what it is already. No. Then that is a disappointment to me, Frank. I'll tell you. Because you struck me as a smart guy. Oh, you did. You struck me as a type of man that could see a little further than most of the people you work with. But then maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm losing my edge. It happens, I'm afraid. One day you're as sharp as a laser. The next, the world has changed. Whatever you depended on yesterday, it ain't there no longer. Makes people feel, uh, what's the point of it all? So one may be tempted to give up and look for an easier way. I understand. No, no, I really do. No one can continue with frustration in their heart. So I'm slightly surprised, Frank, that you haven't yet understood my confusion. Then again, maybe there is a simple explanation after all. Perhaps it only looks like a mystery to those of us on the outside. I'm guessing you are the man to set me straight. Answer my question. Take the doubt out of my mind. You see, Frank... There's something about this whole business that refuses to make sense to me. A square peg that I just can't make fit into a round hole. Oh. Yes, because as we've been talking, I've started to wonder. I started to consider a coincidence. Now, I've got to tell you, Frank, I'm not one of those guys that says they don't believe in coincidences, because I do. I just don't happen to believe in them very often. So when I see one right before my eyes, it makes all the alarm bells in my head start to ring. And as they say... They're ringing right now. So here's my question. And I'm sure there's a very simple explanation, which is why you're here. And I, for one, can't wait to hear it. And I'm sure it's a good one. Knockout, in fact. A guaranteed home run, I should say. A type of simple, clear explanation that will settle the nerves of all around and make us kick ourselves for not having seen it already. So here it is. If your attendance as a security guard is so consistent and you are never late, and you are never ill, not an itch, or a sprain, or a cough, or a sneeze, and you never take off any time because of, say, you've had a late night, or friends coming over, or think, I just fancy the day off, or hell, I don't know, something about life being too darn short. But if you are none of those things, then answer me this. How come you did call in sick yesterday, which just happens to be the only time the Bank of Tunbridge Carter in this quiet town's 100-year history, has ever been robbed. Come in. Better tuck your blouse in. And pull your skirt down a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I told you you wanted to see me, sir. I, I didn't realize you were busy. I can come back in a little while. No need, Frank. Come on in. Right. Jenny's here was just taking a letter for me. Mrs. Gradler. Hi, Frank. If that will be all, Mr. O'Donnell. Don't go just yet, Janice. I have something else for you to do. Yes, sir. Frank, I wanted to thank you the other week for, well, for your tactfulness. Yes, let's say that. Let's use that terminology, as it were, over the issue of, of, well, the little issue of... (sighs) Janice, this man before you is a stoic of this bank's entire operation. Without the likes of Frank here, I don't know how any of this building would survive. I truly don't. You see, Janice, a few weeks ago, in fact, it's over a month ago, and I got into a little, and only a little bit of trouble with, with, well, now that I think about, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say this. I needed a small amount. 
small amount. You mean like of time, a short vacation? Uh, no, Janice, that wasn't, that wasn't quite what I meant, not quite what I was alluding to. <laughs> no, what I was meaning to thank Frank here about was something else. You see, Janice, about a month ago, I found myself short, as I said. I had, well, I won't deny my mistake. After all, we all make them from time to time. But the thing is, I made a small error of judgment. And the result was, I found myself without much money. For sandwiches, lunches over the weekend. I could have lent you money. And that is very generous of you, Janice. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But at the time, at the time, you weren't in the room, as they say. But our Frank here was. Oh, oh, that's all right. Yeah, Frank was the guy. He's always the guy. He's the guy you can rely on. He's always here, always around. He's the one that sees everything and knows everything. Ain't that right, Frank? Just do him a job, Mr. O'Donnell. And you do it very well, Frank. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you, sir. So, Janice, Frank here helped me out in a little way. He, uh... Bought you lunch? Not exactly, Janice, no. I, I mean, I'm sure Frank eats at the Royal, just like I do. But no, that, that wasn't what I meant. No, what I was coming to was that Frank here helped me out in another way. Like I help you out, Mr. O'Donnell. No, not quite in that way, Janice. Not really that way at all. No, what I was coming around to was that Frank here, well, he lent me a day's pay. No, he did. He gave me, out of his own pocket, 110 bucks of his own money. 110? And I was touched, Janice. I don't mind telling you. To think that Frank would come to my aid in my hour of need, I have to tell you, it got me right here. On your chest? My heart, Janice. I thought, here is a man, a real man, a man's man. You're a hell of a guy, Frank. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. No, Frank, thank you. You done real swell there, Frank. Thank you again. So I've been left to thinking... That, after all, is what my job entails. That's what the manager does, eh? Think the big thoughts, the concept, the vision. Sometimes you have to think about the little guy. The people that make it all happen. Those that keep the engine turning over. You are one of those, Frank. And you are an unsung hero of this bank. That's very kind of you to say so, Mr. O'Donnell. And to show the bank's gratitude, my gratitude, for all that you've done. I'd like not only to return to you your money, but to offer you something else. Oh, sir? Take tomorrow off. Call in sick. Break the habit of a lifetime. There'll be no questions asked. Go and do something you want to do. Go and spend the day fishing. You'll be down on the security detail. In this sleepy town, nothing ever happens here. I'm sure we'll manage for 24 hours without you. Go and have a regular vacation. I ate something. You ate something? It disagreed with me. Did it? Yes. And what exactly disagreed with you, if you don't mind me asking? Chicken. I guess I didn't cook it properly. Where'd you buy it from? Convenience store on the corner of 4th and 9th. If I asked there, would anyone remember you? You'd have to ask. Did you see anything in the days leading up to the robbery? What sort of things? You're a professional security guard, Frank. Do I need to tell you? Did you see anyone suspicious? You know the drill. Long coats in summer, taking pictures inside or outside of the bank. Anyone counting the cameras? Again, within or without. Staff rotors changed. Anyone inquiring about security procedures, infrared tripwire, surveillance, timings on the safe. Come on, Frank, you've been doing this for too many years not to see in all directions at once. No one can see in more than one direction, Mr. Jones. You look to your right, your centre, your left, three o'clock, twelve o'clock, nine o'clock, then back to three, giving yourself the widest possible scope of view which is code for looking out for anything out of the ordinary. The people that did this robbery must have been checking out the bank for weeks, if not months, 
an operation this flash